What up, New England? Uh, let me get Travis's text up there. Hey, everybody, uh, we're speeding through the show tonight because so much, so much happened today as far as uh, MMA news and fighters getting work and late call-ups and replacements and Jesus, uh, you know, I was at work, all of a sudden my phone is tinging and it's my messenger and it's Lars and Travis and I know when it's going off the hook like that, they are telling stories. So, without any further ado, I have my partner, my media partner, my business partner, um, and a personal friend of mine, Travis Lazat, who wrote a couple of articles today, short articles on what has happened. So, Travis, welcome to the show, my man, my partner, my friend for the last six years, bro. Yeah, good to see you, man. Um, happy to be here. Happy that the the news is starting to pick up because uh, this is what we've been looking for for over a year now, and um, it looks like it, it's nonstop today. Uh, we we saw the uh, that uh, Will Knight's out of his fight uh, this weekend, and we saw Fabio Chiron pick up that uh, spot for him at UFC 260. Uh, huge story there. Uh, two New England guys, one falling out uh, due to uh, COVID protocol with William Knight. Um, and then Fabio jumping in after winning the LFA light heavyweight championship against Myron Dennis and taking the spot of Will Knight uh, making his UFC debut against, um, oh man, why is uh, Alonzo Menafield, um, heavy handed dude, uh, earned his ticket to the UFC through the ultimate, I mean, uh, through the Dana White's contender series, um, proved to be a pretty tough opponent for anyone. Um, Fabio stepping up, um, and like we posted earlier today, uh, when that UFC phone call comes in, um, that's not the one that you want to reject. That's the one you want to pick up every time. And Fabio has been asking for it. He asked for it after he won that belt. He said he wanted to be in the UFC and here he goes. He gets that opportunity against a guy who has, uh, extreme power, extreme talent. And, uh, I think it's going to be a great show, um, as, as to how far Fabio has come in the past uh, couple fights here. Um, going from prospect to a to a star, this could this could be his launching point. It's awesome, excellent, and um, I would imagine he's right in tip top shape coming off that that LFA uh, championship fight, a five round fight, and he looked like you know he looked great up until the end of that fight where he took that belt, and like you said, I mean that's a big belt to have, and uh, for him to take this on what three or four days notice. That's that that's something uh, to say about this kid, and that goes a long, long way with um, uh, the UFC and especially New England taking the place of Will Knight, another huge, huge two hundred five er in our uh, New England uh, community, man. So as far as the matchup here, what is the difference here? We know what William brings; it's pure strength and athleticism, uh, a great control game game on the ground. Uh, he's legit on his feet. He's got some good kicks, got some Muay Thai background on him, but uh, we know what Will Will is. He, he's he got gas for days, and, uh, uh, you know, his will just overtakes fights no matter what. So what's the difference in the matchup and uh, this fight here for both these guys? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> Fabio showed in the, in the, the Dennis fight uh, for the LFA title that um, – he wants to be a striker, even though he um, started out his career mainly as a grappler, uh, snatching necks for C uh, for Cage Titans and CES. Um, but the th thing is, he's he's done, work, done a lot of work with his boxing, um, and it, his boxing really got him the win against Myron Dennis, who was a former kickboxing champion, um, and he really outpointed him on the feet. Um, <clears throat> so this is where it, where it would differ is is uh, Will Knight's much more. Uh, gonna punch his way in close the distance put somebody up against the fence drag him into to deep deep water and and just take the life out of him where sharon um used to do that type of deal but now with this with the striking prowess he's shown in the last couple fights um he's he's a guy who could um hang with menafield on the on the feet a little bit um so i i think this fight is, is I don't know. It's hard, it's hard to be any more explosive than than Will Knight. Um, it, that that's that's for sure. It's good to see that Will has actually already rescheduled this fight. Um, not not this particular matchup, but um, he will be fighting uh, April tenth. So it's good to see that um, it, it's coming back around for Will Knight. But th no, this is a quality matchup. Um, this is a tough guy to make your UFC debut against Menafield. Um, I believe he's nine and one, nine and two, something along those lines. Either way, um, tough dude heavy hands 
Um, if Fabio wants to stand and trade with him, he'll probably stand and trade. Um, Fabio probably would have to go back to his grappling really to, to, to find his, um, his real advantage in this fight. But, um, I think Fabio has shown that he's, he's rounded out his game and can, can handle himself against just about anyone. Excellent. My man. Well, this is, uh, what is what is something like this a late notice entail for Fabio? Is this a three fight contract automatically? Is it a one fight contract? What do you think is up here for him to come here? Is this kind of um, a trial run, and if he does well here, that's when he gets something else? What's what's the what happens here as far as uh, late notice and him jumping in there? I mean, it, it's always going to be a feather in your cap to answer that phone call for the UFC. Um, he's been on the Contender Series before, uh, um, so. I'm <clears throat> Just answering this call puts him in the good graces of the UFC. Um, the UFC knows that Alonzo is a, a tough opponent. Um, they, they know he's going in a tough spot here. Um, so, I mean, it, you, can't, it, you can't – I mean, he's, he's going to go out and perform, uh, which he's very capable of doing. And it, it, I don't know. There's not a whole lot of downside that comes to this. Fabio is a young fighter to get the experience to put him on a UFC card early in his career like this. Um, it, it can't really hurt. Um, he's going to go out there and test himself either way. If we win or lose, we learn a lot about him in this fight. Um, I, I, I really don't think you can go wrong. It's just the opportunity he's been looking for and, and short notice or not. If he's ready to go, he knows, he knows better than anyone else. Excellent. My man. Well, um, we got another announcement that was made right after the Fabio announcement, which I have to confess I knew a little bit about because I was at Combat Jiu-Jitsu a couple of weeks ago, and uh, John Duma was there, and there was some you know chatter that it that it might happen, like Bellator was coming, and he you know he was telling me that he was speaking with them, and Tyson and all them were trying to get something going, and I thought maybe Jay Perrin would have been uh, the guy because Jay Perrin was talking about. How he would that would be a great fight. So I thought maybe Jay Perrin was baiting me a little bit, thinking, uh, you know, since Duma told me, uh, I thought, you know, Jay mentioned it. Maybe it was going to be them two guys. But instead, let's talk about it, Travis. Who is John Duma uh, matched up against in uh, April? Uh, it's going to be the um, Fighting Arts Academy product slash Golden Falcon product, Will Sriracha Smith. Um, Will's three and two coming off a loss in Bellator, but um, has shown signs of greatness. Um, had had a lot of hype coming out of uh, his amateur career. Um, early three and two, you know, he's fought some tough fights, but uh, gets a shot here against Duma. Duma is as tough as they come. Um, he's been out since his loss uh, to Jornel Lugo. Uh, in Bellator way back then in uh, 2019. So Doom has been off for a little while, but like you said, he competed against Johnny Cupcakes in combat jiu-jitsu uh, just a couple weeks ago at Enigma and uh, really um, showed a lot against Cupcakes, somebody who's a veteran and uh, can hold his own anywhere um, and, and the number on Johnny and uh, and and made him tap out in that, that uh, jiu-jitsu match, which I enjoyed watching um, quite a bit. So this is a, this is a pretty cool fight. Um, you get two guys uh, highly anticipated um, coming off Bellator losses, really looking to secure their place, maybe on the Bellator roster going forward, especially if they um, continue to stay at Mohegan Sun like they have been the past um, few shows. Um, it's probably uh, you could secure one of these guys a contract with the promotion, I would imagine. Um, but tough fight for both of these guys um uh neither neither are slouches and uh they train with some of the best gyms uh in new england try for us uh with john duma um and then like i said the golden falcon and faa uh nick newell product uh, in will smith it's it's a cool matchup um just it, it's so crazy to have two real stories today but uh, involving four different um fighters coming from our region really cool well there's some there's there's some um there's some uh connection here too between all these fighters john duma did fight uh Jer, uh Jer, uh journal journal uh yeah journal lugo yeah he's like five and oh now and he's he uh yep. 
you know, he beat John Doomer that last fight John Doomer had. And um, yep. training partner of Mike Kimball. And, uh, you know, I don't know if he's uh, trained a lot with Will, but, you know, he's been around. He's he. I think he, you know, dabbled with them guys, maybe, you know, did some cross sparring with them. But, you know, they do know John Duma, that camp, very well. So it's a very, very, very yep. interesting fight. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think Duma makes any fight uh, uh, interesting, um, and especially with a little bit of uh, fire under his ass or and fire under the ass of Will Smith, I'm sure. They're both coming off losses. They both need a win, <clears throat> and to get it for Bellator is just huge for either of them. So um, it's not going to be an easy fight um, for either of these guys, I don't believe. Um, Will has... has um, showed grittiness in the past. Um, he fought a real tough kid last time out, something like five and zero. Oh. Um, it, it was a real tough fight. A, 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 uh, so, a so dynamic, the, dynamic wrestler, and that's basically yeah. how he beat Will. He just he held him down and uh, didn't give uh, Will any space to breathe. Uh, and we know Will, yeah. you know, Will wants to stand there and he wants to th throw hands and he wants to make a very action action packed fight. But you know, you're going against the kid that. You know, that's his base, and he's going to use it. And if it's going to work, he's going to use it. And it's been working for the kid. And he's I think he's got a contract for Bellator, Bellator too. So something like that, man, yep. you got to go with your game. And, you know, that's where I see John Duma going uh, the same way with, uh, you know, John Duma's really good on his feet, but we know his jiu-jitsu game is where it's at. And uh, I see him, you know, trying to take, uh, you know, Will down as soon as that first opportunity arises. Yeah, absolutely. There's no question Duma's wrestling is is what he's going to go to. Um, whether he's ahead on the scorecards or behind on the scorecards, that's how he finishes fights um, on the ground, pretty much. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's what he's going to have to go to. Um, I, I don't think it'll be a big surprise if we see him come out and uh, and and put it, put it on Will. Uh, or just try to close Will's distance. Um, that's what he needs to do. Um, but it, it's a good it's a good fight for both of these guys. It's a good way. I mean, we've been saying this since the start of the pandemic that no no what you get right now is going to be an easy fight, and this is the that that case. Both of the, both of these guys are tough opponents for each other. Excellent. Well, Travis, as we're speaking right now, I was uh, uh, my guest tonight besides you, and you were last minute because all this news came up. And uh, I was like, I got to have Travis on here because you wrote the articles. And as, as we've been spoke, speaking about them, um, I've been flashing them. But Jonathan Piersma and Nick Alley, who are fighting next Thursday night for CFFC, uh, are my guests. But um, Nick, as you would know, it's last week before fucking fights. They're leaving probably Tuesday. Who knows? Next Tuesday. You know what I mean? So Nick had to cancel. Um, I just spoke to him while you and I were uh, speaking just now. And Nick has to cancel, uh, and that's totally understandable. He's training hard. This is the biggest fight of his uh, uh, career right now. You know, every fight for him is the biggest fight of his career. So we're going to reschedule, and we're yep. going to do a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Nick and I are going to talk, and we're going to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, recorded interview. So, um, you know, shout out to him. He feels bad, but, you know, <clears throat> Nick and I, and we've been uh, together for years and years. He knows it, you know. But, Travis, I'm going to keep you on longer and you're a godsend, man. I called you up and messaged you a half hour before the show for a reason. Because things happen like this on a live broadcast. And you are my pot of gold tonight, brother. So let's keep going, man. So let's let's keep going with CFFC. And hopefully Jonathan, uh, <laughs> we have Jonathan. But if not, uh, Jonathan was supposed to call around 930. So Travis, you might have to, I don't know if you have to work. I might get uh, fucking Lars on here. He's probably putting his kids to sleep. I have no idea. But Travis, we're going to talk until the cows come home. So anyway, Travis, yeah. next Thursday night, two of our favorite fighters are fighting. We have Nick Alley, who is making his first trip to the CFFC cage. And we also have Jonathan John Piersmer who is managed by Full Contact Management, who made his debut for the organization back in Jan uh, back in December, came away with a first-round finish off a tough, tough dude making his pro debut. Now, John is back fighting, I think, I'm not sure if this is uh, this kid's second pro fight or, or what, but um, let's talk about 
a little third pro fight. So let's talk a little bit about this and uh, this matchup with Jonathan and uh, and what's going on here next uh, next week. Uh, yeah, this is another another tough guy for John, but um, we Lars and I talked about this when we signed John. We think he's got uh, a lot of potential in the 170 pound weight class. Um, so we we don't we're not scared about guys with tough records because Tyler Bunting was seven and one as an amateur, and John made quick work of him with that mounted guillotine. Um, so it, it's just the next step. Um, Tommy actually comes with a fair amount of hype. He's fought four times for CFFC in the past, including two fights for his amateur uh, career. He also fought at um, – when CES was in Philly, he fought on that card uh, as an amateur and won a fight uh, there as well. But uh, Tommy is is a striker, um, essentially. He's he's a long uh, six-foot-one uh, welterweight. Um, he eventually plans on possibly moving down from welterweight, but uh, – this isn't the fight he's going to get to do that at. Uh, John's a big welterweight. Um, we know that. Um, John will probably have some strength advantage in this fight, which he has in most fights um, because of his grappling background and his purple belt in jiu-jitsu. Um, usually it takes him pretty far, um, as we've seen in the past. So uh, Tommy's one of those guys. Uh, all the fights that I've seen of, from him online, um, he comes out spinning from the opening bell, uh, likes to throw some flashy strikes, um, likes to establish his jab, um, kicks a lot with his front leg. Um, so it, it's just going to be one of those deals where um, John has to put him on his back foot. Um, he, he's got he's to get Tommy moving in the wrong direction, uh, put him on his back, put, him to the, put his back to the cage, um, take him down and, uh, you know, advance through his guard and, and, and do some damage with some strikes. He's just got to – Touch him, be first, and uh, I think the the finish will establish itself from there. Yeah, watching uh, watching this kid, uh, watching John's opponent here, Tommy. He's very athletic, man. Very, yeah. very athletic, like super athletic. This kid. Um, but looking at these guys, and not that that means a hell of a lot. At well, maybe it does. But I think John's going to be the bigger dude in here in the, in this fight. I mean, that guy's very athletic, so I'm sure he's kind of he doesn't cut much weight to get to uh, where he has. And it ain't like John's killing himself to get there too. But as we know, John is a big, big welterweight. Once he gets in that cage, you know, after uh, you know getting his fluids and stuff back in him. But if I would imagine this fight, if it stays on its feet, that's where. Uh, you know, the kid's going to have his advantage maybe over John. Not that John's striking isn't there, but we know John is much uh, better and much more comfortable when he has the control and he's ready to land elbows or, or do damage on the ground to you. Yeah, um, from also from Tommy's fights, I've seen a lot of guys have been able to take him down in the past. He's never fought a wrestler like John, which gives me a lot of confidence that John's going to have no trouble taking him down. Um, on the feet, like you said, uh, he, that's probably not... Uh, John's path, to, clear path to victory is to fight him on the feet. Um, but I've noticed him fighting other wrestlers. Um, he, he carries a low guard in the uh, in his stand-up that makes him susceptible to overhand uh, return shots on his combinations. Um, there's things that Tommy does that uh, are pretty elementary. <laughs> hey, man, it, it's, it's, it's going to be the best fighter. Like, I'm just saying, I just, I just uh, honestly, we just broke this fight down. Um, I've been looking at it yeah. for the past week and a half. Um, well, so well, well, here's the I, thing. I've been looking at a lot of tape on Tommy, <laughs> of um, even though do. there's not a whole lot out there. <laughs> well, here's, here's, I mean, you are part manager of John. So, of course, you're going to scout the hell out of this kid. Uh, and, yep. and, you know, and it just shows you how passionate, how good uh, you're doing to take care and, uh, you know, make sure your fighters have the best fights possible out there, man. John's second fight, man, uh, coming off that last fight, you know, even though it's his only second uh, second pro fight, the kid's got, like, huge potential as far as in the eyes of uh, CFFC at this point. And, uh, you know, there's room for him in the organization to uh, move up. Oh, yeah. CFFC loves him at this point. Um, and, and John's one of those guys that uh, he wanted to get right back in it. Um, he didn't care how long the fight camp was. He just wanted to stay busy. Um, he had some jiu-jitsu uh, match lined up. 
Um, that's not going to end up happening uh, now. But he he stays busy. Um, he he's not one of those guys that fights for his next opponent um, he, or trains for his next opponent. He's just the kind of guy who just wants to keep getting in there. And that'll go a long way with CFFC, especially if he starts taking out some of these bigger names. I mean, I know Tommy has some following as well. Um, and, and I had heard his name in the past. So um, it, it's just one of those deals where uh, I, I don't think Jonathan's name is as big as, as Tommy's maybe right now, but uh, John Pierce but is the guy to watch out for in this fight, uh, in my opinion. Um, and, and, and in many fights to come, he, he's a beast. Yeah, well, he's supposed to be coming on. Uh, you know, we had a little uh, mix up. So he's supposed to be coming on 925 or so. We're going to hang out at Travis as long as possible. Uh, you know, if he cancels, uh, you know, it's fine. I'm going to get a one-on-one with him also. Travis, we got big news today, and, you know, th- that's a show in itself, what we're talking about. But, Travis, there's more to this story at CFFC 94. We have Nick Alley, yes. who is making his first trip to their cage, coming off a huge win against John Gotti III back in October when CES uh, got their first fight back after the, um, after the you know, the delay, I want to call it. So, Travis, yeah. I'm going to throw that yeah. poster up, and uh, let's talk about Nick Alley and this opportunity and him fighting and the dude he's fighting, what you know. I, I'll i be honest with you. I've, I've been so um, into this John Piersma fight <laughs> that I don't know much about his opponent, but I do know quite a bit about Mr. Alley himself. Um, and we said this last time we talked about Nick Alley when he fought John Gotti. And you said it earlier, it, every fight is going to be the biggest fight of his career, especially after after beating Gotti. Um, you know, his stock rose and he's now I mean, he was always a name. He was always a prospect. Um, but the John Gotti fight really, uh, you know, sealed the deal for him and 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 put him in a, in a spot that he may not be um, if he didn't get the opportunity to beat John Gotti by decision at CES. Um, that's just the, the cut and dry of it. Uh, and to get this opportunity, his second straight appearance on UFC fight pass, it's a huge thing for him. Um, he has another chance to, I am sure this kid is, is one of their prospects. Um, I did look up a little bit about him before. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I've heard his name before. I believe he's, he's a wrestler. He's got a ton, um, ton of fights with them. He's coming off a loss, but I think he had four or five or maybe six fights with them as a as a pro. I don't know if he was with them as an yeah. amateur ranks, but as a pro, he uh, gets to a lot of decisions. His last two fights, I think they were finishes. He had one finish, and he was, um, I think he was finished in the first round or so, uh, his last fight. I could be wrong on that, but you would think the run he had and uh, the guy he was facing that last fight, that could have been like a, a kind of um, um, maybe a title shot or a number one contender kind of fight since he's fought so many times for CFFC. Yeah, I mean, this this guy, I don't remember. I wish I had it in front of me, and for some reason, I don't know why a name rings a bell for me as uh, Levi Moles, but I might be wrong. Um, it was one of those guys that came from CFFC that was like a top contender that he ended up losing to. Um, th- th- yeah, this guy this guy is expected to, I bet uh, Nick knows he's going into the same type of fight as he was with Gotti. This is probably the promotions guy. Um Nick is probably supposed to go in there and 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 just further this guy's career, but Nick's shown in the past that's not what he does. Um, this guy might want to wrestle. Nick's is is great up from his back with submissions. Um, if this guy wants to strike with Nick, Nick's long on the on the feet. Um, he's got a nice stiff jab um, and and a, and a good striking base. Um, so I mean, Nick is 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 capable of of taking it wherever it needs to go and uh, doing what it needs to do to come out with a victory. I mean, I'll be pulling for him. There's no question. And uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Lars did say in the, in the live here that uh, Gotti has booked himself a fight as well uh, for CES um, in in Florida. Um, I saw that earlier today. And as you do speak about Gotti, Orlando, Florida, if you, as you speak about Gotti, which is so ironic, and coincidental. I have, when he fought for CES, I think the second time in uh, Twin yep. Rivers, I do have the CES pink hat with 
John Gotti Jr. Or, yeah, or second. John Gotti the second signature on there. I will be giving this away at some time. I haven't figured out when, but at some point, this is gone. So, um, and since he's fighting, the name's coming back. Maybe I'll give it away sooner than later. So, Travis, a couple more things, buddy. Uh, Lars, if you're listening, which you are, because you're, you're taking notes, you're saying Travis's fucking feed sucks or whatever. But it actually looks good right now, Travis. You only, uh, you know, it hiccup maybe twice, but that may be on my end. I'll take it this time, Travis, is me. So, fuck you, Lars. So, it, anyway, wait, it, wait. It was short notice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're performing very fucking well, man. So, anyway, Lars, uh, you didn't get my message, which uh, I want you to put the links to Travis's articles today as far as uh, the one on Fabio and his uh, late notice to the UFC and uh, the John Doomer and um, and uh, Will Smith articles. Put them links on the feed. Also, put Jonathan Piersmere's, uh t-shirt link on this feed. So Travis can't do it because he's on me, but Lars, get to work, throw it out on his feed because we still have things to talk about. And, uh, you know, Jonathan should be talking, calling in about 10 minutes or so. But Travis, we have more to talk about for CFFC 94. Travis, this is a big day for New England MMA because uh, not much content. We've had to dig it and uh, dig it up. And and thank God our fighters are getting fights other than in New England. I mean, thank God we have jiu-jitsu going on in here and this, uh, you know, this jiu-jitsu combat and uh, and all that other stuff we can cover. and, And, you know, it's great. But you... Me and Lars are taking a road trip. Let's not say who is our guest, uh, you know, guest driver with us. We, we we can mention that in a couple of days or whatever, make an announcement of what's going on. But anyway, you, me, and Lars are taking a trip. And where are we going, La- uh, Travis? Because I do have a poster. So announce it right now, buddy. Yeah, destination the 2300 <laughs> Arena in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for CFFC 94 Thursday, April 1st. We will be there. We bought a table last night. Um, it was kind of a unique situation for us. We had talked about going in the past and then tickets um, had dried out. Um, and they ended up opening up a couple extra tables. We hopped on it last night. You had to buy tables of four. So, yes, we will have a guest, which we will announce at a later date. Um, but we are going to CFFC 94. Um, this will be the first time any of us have met our uh, client, John Piersma, in person. Um, and we intend to do so uh, walking out with a 2-0 and record for CFFC. Um, and then we're just going to happen to be there for our good buddy uh, Nick Alley's fight. Um, it, it, it just works out. Um, it was one of those situations where I could take the time off from work and um, everyone was kind of in a cool situation where they could drop what they were doing and uh, take the, for me and Lars, it's about a six hour road trip to uh, Philadelphia. We will pick up our other guest and Mr. Cranston himself, <laughs> Steve Domenico. Well, 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 here, here's something cool because uh, you're going to pick me up here, but I just want to give a hint about one of our guests. Uh, I know one of our road trip friends, uh, he will, he's uh, looking to make his pro debut And uh, we're bringing him down there not only to hang out and watch some great fights and support some New England fighters and also, you know, Jonathan, who uh, he might have some coincidental connections with. But uh, we're going to shop his name around at the CFFC cage about him making his pro debut. So uh, we take care of our people and uh, we... We want them to be, you know, we want to have fun. So we we got a dude that's coming with us, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to shop uh, all our fighters around. But I am excited. Um, I was going to ask you, tra- oh, Travis, that's what I was going to say. We can always come into the room podcast and do like a 25-minute live podcast before we hit the road officially. Because, you know, my podcast... Yeah, absolutely. My podcast office is only 15 minutes down the road from where you guys are going to be picking me up. So, what I say is meet me at the Room Podcast. We'll podcast when you get here. And then we're fucking off to Philly, baby, for CFFC 94. How's that sound? 
It sounds awesome. And I think we got to keep the cameras rolling for most of the trip because uh, that's going to be something we're going to want to document. Um, there's no question about it. Uh, meeting up with some people in Philly, uh, getting our name out there. See, for me, you and Lars, our first live action in over a year uh, since we went to premiere um, as far as full fights go. I mean, you went to Enigma, but uh, I'm just anxious to sit there uh, and watch some fights and, and watch John Piers go to you know, and watch Nick Alley shock, shock the world once again at a promotion that I've never attended before in a city I've never been to. I mean, it's kind of an impromptu thing, but uh, that's sometimes when you have the most fun, when you just go grab the bull by the horns, I guess. Excellent, my man. Uh, well, I just messaged Jonathan. John just, I keep calling him Jonathan. John, well, it's his name, but John sounds so much like a 2-0 and fucking beast. So John is, um, <laughs> he's going to call and he's uh, just finishing up practice here right now so another thing i want to talk about before you know we get jonathan and 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 other um what am i saying let me know all right let me know um we have i uh, even though it's next week it's it's when we're leaving april 2nd we have another friend of ours who is making their pro debut for vala fighting challenge now Yep. Let's talk a little bit about this. I did have him on my podcast last week, and we have been following this kid since, you know, maybe his second amateur fight. And, uh, you know, he had his up and downs, but, man, 10 fights as amateur, and now he's making his pro debut against, um, you know, a dude that's going to bring it to him. And let's talk about our Aaron Short Fuse Hughes making his pro debut next week at 155. No, I mean, I think this is awesome. Uh, it, the 155 thing, when I first heard it, was I was a little thrown off. Um, but I'm pretty sure his fight against Xavier Cardona at pins uh, in in yeah, Cage Titans was at a higher weight or whatever, and that didn't seem to bother Aaron at all. Um, I don't know. Aaron's just that good guy. You, you know, you want to root for him. He's always, he's constantly working. He grinds with some of the best teammates at uh, Regiment Training Center. Um, he's always, he, you know, he's always in the gym. He's always looking to get better, always looking to promote himself. Uh, so it's awesome to see a guy like this who, you know, had a 500 or under record as an amateur make his pro debut in a time like this. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, and of course he's, he's, um, training with good people over there at Regiment and he he's marketed himself in the way that he's got, uh, he, you know, it's the squeaky wheel who gets the grease and, and Aaron's been clamoring for his pro debut. Um, this is actually the second time he's booked for his pro debut and we had covered it before he was supposed to make his pro debut. I think last May um, at NEF against uh, Carl Langston and that didn't happen due to COVID, but um, he kept on it. He kept training and, and, it's it's good on him, man. I'm happy he's making his pro debut, um, and I, I really hope he comes. Uh, he's a, an 0 2 dude. Um, looks pretty tough. Um, I think he does a lot of jujitsu. Um, you know, it's going to be a, fu a fun one. Uh, Aaron will probably, uh, you know, he's going to will probably want to strike with him. This guy's probably going to want to take it to the ground. Um, I'm interested to see how it goes, and I uh, and I really hope Aaron can uh, go down there and represent and start his pro career off 1 and 0. Um, and get get rid of that uh, under 500 record from his amateur career, and, and it's all playing up from there. Excellent. Well, before I play a clip of Aaron real quick, and I think John is uh, telling me he's just about ready, I'm going to play a clip from Aaron, but, you know, Aaron's been training and nonstop speaking with him. He's been waiting for this day. We know he's been waiting for this day. He's training with a bunch of killers. He's been going to Lozans. I mean, of course, he's with Mitch Raposo. He's with Jorgen DeCastro. Uh, Pat McCrone, and he's with, uh, you know, a bunch of jiu-jitsu killers there. So this kid's, you know, Celts, of course, our man Celts there, and, all, you know, so many others. And, you know, he's got so many kids. This kid is ready to explode. So we're going to play um, a little clip of who he explains who he's fighting and, um, you know, who he's been training with getting ready for this fight. But I just want to throw that up there. And then uh, I'll see if Jonathan's ready, and then I'll say bye to you, all right, Travis? So... Uh, hold on. And Travis, you can't talk to Sounds good. You can't talk through this because I think they can hear you, all right? Who's the dude yep. you're fighting now? Uh, you must be studying him at this point and know a lot about him. Yep. Uh, 
I've watched quite a bit of his uh, film. His name is Tyler Edwards. He was a six and one amateur. Um, he's he's zero two as a pro, but he's a lot better than his record looks. Um, he's definitely fought some tough guys. He was an amateur champ out in uh, Tennessee, so uh, I'm definitely looking forward to getting in there and uh, laying it all out on the line, man. So let's talk a little bit about um, COVID and how you stayed busy. And uh, I know you were, I mean, you you guys had your little click and you guys were training here and there, but who are you staying steady with uh, and, and really keeping you in shape through through these dark times? Honestly, I, I mean, there might have been like – one week, maybe two weeks where we didn't really train. But other than that, I mean, our gym's been pretty consistent the whole time. Like the fight team, like me and Mitch Raposo, Pat McCrowan, Jorgen, Matty Franco, like all those guys. So we've been pretty much consistently training like nonstop. Like I haven't, I, I've been training six days a week for the last year. So I haven't really had a day off. So Travis, man. So that was, all. I mean, As you know, not only has Aaron fought, uh, you know, grown as a fighter and uh, just personality, the kid's demeanor and just the calmness and just that levelness of him now. Speaking with him, he's like he's calmer and and everything. It just seems like he gets it now and he got over. He like things click, like start to click, uh, and everything in your career, like you know, jujitsu, striking, it all starts to come together. But the mental game, man, that's a whole nother battle. That's a whole nother, that's another, you know, another whole game and practicing and the reps and all that. I think the kid is finally, you know, he's got it clicking. He's under the great coaches, great, just all around great family behind him, taking care of him. He's got a great job uh, doing things and he's just hungry, man. Uh, this is his life, training and wanting to get to the next level, man. Kudos to this kid, man. And he's fighting, uh, you know, a dude that's been in there a couple of times, an amateur champion, a kid that, you know, is 0-2 as a pro. But like we talked about with Aaron, um, you know, his record wasn't that great as an amateur, but he fought some killers. And that boosted him yep. to make this pro debut. And, and <clears throat> records really don't uh, tell the whole picture of your fights and how you performed in there, man. So, you know, we don't know what this kid has to offer to Aaron, but we know what Aaron has to offer and, and it's game. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, no, I mean, I think just as noteworthy of him training with some of these guys is, is rubbing off on him as a, as a fighter. It's also rubbing off on him in the mental aspect. Like you said, um, a lot of these guys have been around a while. You got Chris Mutino, who's got 12 fights as a pro. He just moved to regiment and, uh, it, it, it's it's that that stable of guys that they have there, um, smart MMA fighters. Uh, that's gonna rub off on you. And like like you said, Aaron has definitely matured uh, both as an athlete and, and just as as a person overall. Um, like like you said, he he's promoting himself um, and he's just promoting that that blue collar type deal where he he straps up his. Uh, he straps up his pads, he straps up his gloves and uh, goes and works with some of the best around. And that's the only way to get any better around here. Um, so yeah, definitely kudos to him, man. I, I, I hope he can get the, get the win and then start off on the right foot in his pro career. There's no question about it. I'm rooting for him. Excellent. Um, last thing I want to talk to you about, uh, I got Jonathan ready to go. Uh, but last thing I want to talk to you about, I did flash the poster last week, but there was an announcement, you know, last, it was, I think it was after Wednesday, maybe it was, or maybe, no, I flashed it last, uh, last Wednesday. So I think the announcement was Tuesday that CES, and we did speak about John Gotti is on the April 30th card, but uh, a couple of minutes, Travis, uh, CES, April 30th in Florida. Let's talk a couple of minutes about that. And, uh, you know, names have been thrown out there, uh, matchups. But there's still more to come, I would imagine. Um, what are you thinking about this card and, and you know, the excitement of CES getting back in the game? Well, it's definitely exciting for me. So the fights I'm going to immediately pick out are the ones that have New England names tied to them. Um, obviously, Gotti's fought in New England his entire career. This will be his first fight in Florida, um, obviously under CES. So it, it's the same promotion, just a different venue. Um 
so that's a, that's what I'm going to be looking for. The guy he's fighting is three and two. Uh, his name escapes me off the top of my head right now. So God, he's five and one, I believe. Is five and one against three and two. This should be a good uh, good one for Gotti to get back in the win column, get to where he needs to be, um, get over that loss to Nick Alley, and finally, uh, you know, strap another couple wins together. Um, another guy is going to be Dennis Paiva. Um, he's on the card as well, fighting a uh, nine and six guy from down there. Um, again, I don't know much about the opponents at this time because I've been concentrating on the CFFC 94, but I've, I've definitely taken a look at the card, that's for sure. Then another big one for us is going to be uh, Gary Belletto um, is back on the card, and I'm happy to see Gary Belletto get back in there. I uh, suffered a couple tough losses, tough knockout uh, here and there, uh, but Nick's one, I mean, uh, sorry, Gary's one of those guys you always root for, got his own gym. Uh, you know, it, everyone knows who is who his dad is, uh, Gary Tiger Boletto, what they do for their uh, their community and stuff. Um, good people. Always fun to see those people around CES. So I'm happy to see Gary back in the CES cage down there. Um, that, that's a good thing. Um, man, there's a, there's a couple matchups there, between guys that there, have never fought. There, there's one. The there, there, there's one more name I want to throw throw out yes. there. Yuri. Uh, Yuri. Yuri. Yeah. Say his last name because I'll butcher yes. it. Yes, it's it's Yuri Panfrov. He's yeah. uh, Andrew uh, Caledrelli. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he he he's one of his guys. Um, I believe he's making his pro debut, middleweight, um, or or one of his first fights. I don't know. It's, he's he's highly anticipated. He's a beast, a monster, um, and, and he's, a, mon- he's, uh, a, ru- a Russian monster. And this kid is such a humble. Yeah. Humble and nice guy. He is um he is the reality fighting, I do believe, uh middleweight or light I think middleweight. a middleweight uh amateur champion. Yep. And he, he I think he's also got two more belts in like a New York promotion and I think he's probably for I think he's for in uh you know Russia overseas as far as Muay Thai, um Jiu Jitsu. He's this kid is fought everywhere is an amateur like really i mean he might have fought you know like an organization like valor or, or something that has amis that's a pretty decent organization he's fought for him yeah. and he's beat up and destroyed people in that cage yeah i mean we've i've heard a lot about him uh coming up and the middleweight is not a huge division for new england so when you have a guy on the outskirts uh it, it's very easily like he could he could come out here and and knock this guy out at ces and put himself right in the picture as one of the top middleweights in new england right off the bat with his first pro win because there's not a lot of guys at 85 out here um but yeah he's definitely one to watch and uh i'm sure i think he's against a guy who's got a couple fights but uh maybe an upside down record, but get him on fight pass, get him in front of the world. And I think he's going to be uh, a pretty big thing for us. Excellent. Well, Travis, I got to let you go because Jonathan is right. Basically on time. Actually, he was ready like 10 minutes ago, but we did schedule at nine 30 Travis, a couple of things. I just want to tell you and say, thank you fucking so much. I would have had to talk here for 45 minutes. I probably would have had a strip. I probably would have had to like fucking put like, I have spaghetti spray. I would have had to do something on the show to keep it going. What I would have done was reschedule uh, Jonathan for a one-on-one because, uh, and I would have just talked about news. But you saved the show, Travis. And another thing I want to say to you is what you're doing is incredible for um, full contact management with, you know, even, you know, Jonathan's a big name and I'm sure... Um, People want to represent him in his town and everything as far as sponsors to get, you know, get his name out there and support him because he's a big to do. But they won't be wouldn't be able to do that without you and and guiding them along and you reaching out to whoever is interested in and in, in, you know helping this kid along. So kudos to you and Lars for you know Lars for getting in the matchup and uh, scouting and you know talking to all these promotions and getting these fighters active. But you for doing the the work in the back that no one really knows what the fuck uh, goes on in, in here. So Travis, two more two minutes and I gotta get you to fuck out of here. But talk about you know what it takes and and what you've been doing in the back as far as uh, helping fighters along in this management company. <clears throat> Well, uh, uh, like you said, John's g- becoming a big name. So he eventually he's just going to sell himself. This is the start of, uh, I mean, 
I, we started campaigning for some sponsors to help up finish up uh, with some final costs of fight camp, some, some medicals and things like that. We wanted to get tied up. We started out probably two and a half, three weeks ago. And since then we've, uh, we've attracted eight or nine uh, sponsors. Um, and, and it's been really good. Everyone in the, the, the community that knows John knows uh, that he's a good person and he's got all the potential in the world. So um, putting, you know, the, you know, connecting the dots between those two and, and just making sure we fulfill our, um, our requirements as, as a management company and, and help John uh, get where he needs to be, help him achieve his dreams. And we can't do it without these sponsors. So um, big ups to them. I don't have the list in front of me. I know there's eight or nine of them now that um, have, have called up and on short notice and, and sponsored this thing and, and, and really, allowed John to not worry about the, the final expenses, if you will, and just worry about blasting this guy, uh, you know, come Thursday night and uh, being the best fighter he can be with the best uh, crew backing him. Um, you know, it, it was one thing we, John didn't really have sponsors uh, uh, when he came out of the amateur level. So uh, seeing all these people reach out and, and looking to sponsor him just goes to show uh, what kind of person he is. And uh, uh, that a lot of people think the same way we do, um, that he's one of the next big things. Um, so, yeah, it, you know, J John's going to sell himself. I Like I said, I connect the dots. I do a few things behind the scenes, but uh, John's really selling himself, and uh, his career trajectory is going to uh, keep doing that for him. Awesome. I love you, my man. As you were talking, I did flash. I did, did put up the picture of um, of John, John's shirts, his walkout shirts that are up for sale on our website. Lars design the shirt but you know in the beginning it was kind of we all threw our ideas but you know the final product is all Lars Lars worked his ass off on this logo for John um and just making it perfect it, I think it looks fucking fabulous I put it up but I'll talk to yeah. John more about it and uh we all got him we're gonna be wearing him at the show uh next Thursday night so Travis again Thank you so fucking much, my my good friend and partner man, for uh, saving me tonight. And uh, dude, I can't wait to hit the road with you. And you guys, dude, I've been, I, you know, I've had this room for the last three years or so. This will be the first time, and I've I've only known Lars maybe you know a year, sixteen months or so. I've known you six or so. This is the first time you're gonna see me uh, see the room podcast, man. We're gonna have a ball next fucking Wednesday when you guys pick me up, man. Oh, when yeah, is it? Thursday. Th yeah, Thursday. You're going to pick me up Thursday. Thursday, whatever. <laughs> Plans can change on the drop of a hat, but we're going to Philly. <laughs> All right. All right, my man. I got to let you go because I got to let the I got to get the kid on. Talk about fighting and, and get the fuck out of here. I got to work in the morning. Absolutely. All right, my man. John's the star. Let me right. have it. All right. Love you. Take care. <laughs> All right. Hang up. All right. Uh, you're out of here. All right, John. Where are you? Poor kids probably fucking waiting forever. What's up, Brian Gilligan? What's up, Killer? Listen, I, I will not have you on that long because I know you're fucking, it's, it's, it's crunch time, brother. So let me get you on right here. They can hear you and everything. There's the handsome devil. There he is. John Piers, my man. Uh, thanks for coming on. Crunch time. Uh, what are you doing? Just getting done training, and where? Where are you? Yeah, well, I actually just walked into my house, but yeah, I, <laughs> I just got done training. Excellent. Last time uh, you and I spoke, you were in your car, so uh, this this works out yeah. a little better. <laughs> I made it, I made it home this time. Awesome. Well, wait, wait, I kept you here because I had fucking Travis <laughs> on, and uh, we couldn't stop talking. Let me get uh, John. Let me get your text up here, and then we can talk for a little while. I won't have you on long, brother. Uh, but I appreciate you coming on, and congratulations, man, on uh, your next opportunity fighting for CFFC again, buddy. How you feeling about getting back there in uh, you know about three months time? Uh, well, I was happy. I've been trying to get a fight since, I mean, after my last one ended. Um, 
they, uh, the fight got over, and they initially they were planning on fights in February, I believe. So I was on Lars about getting on that card, and um, so then they got bumped to March. So then I was on them to get on the March cards. Uh, that didn't work out against Spot, so I was really pushing to get on these cards, and it didn't look like I was going to be on it until about two two weeks ago or so. They called up and asked if I wanted to take this fight on sort of short notice, but I've been getting ready to fight since, you know, the end of my last fight, so I, I took it. Excellent. I think the last time we spoke, John, we were actually interviewing, and they canceled the card or, or something, or they move the date up or is that what is that what happened and you like or was that the last card they had no they uh they had two cards in march um i wanted to be on those cards but that didn't okay. uh, work out so then i was pushing hard to get on these two but then up until about two weeks ago it yeah. didn't look like i was gonna get a spot on it um, and then that's when they called. I'm guessing someone might have dropped out. Or something. Yeah, and that's, that's I and th- I think that's what we were talking about. That the fight, the cards were already full. So uh, you know, we were talking about yeah, like maybe a, a later I, date. I'm gu- I'm guessing probably the guy I'm fighting now, his opponent probably dropped out or something. I'm guessing that's probably why I got called. Excellent. Well, let's talk about your opponent now, my friend. Um, your last opponent was making his uh, pro debut along with you, and uh, you know a kid with high credentials and coming off uh, some a successful amateur career of himself, uh, you made pretty easy work of him, uh, submitted him in the first round. You are going against a different opponent here that has a little or a lot more experience as a pro and in that CFFC cage. Let's talk about this matchup and what you're thinking about it and the opportunity and, and the excitement being able to go against somebody that, uh, you know, beating could really uh, loft your, uh, your your stock up in the CFFC cage. Yeah, it was uh, when I got the call and he told me the opponent I looked up, I thought, you know, it's a great it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, he's 2-0 pro. Um, so obviously if I can get that win, it'll look good. Um, and he's also, I think he's fought pretty much most of his fights for CFFC. So he's kind of one of their guys, I guess. Um, so it'd be another good win, you know, to get on my belt. Um but yeah, you know, I, he uh, actually the same kid back in um, October before I even made my pro debut, they called CFFC offered me a fight with him. Um, I said I would take it for my debut. Um, I don't know, maybe he had one fight at the time, or maybe it would have been his debut too. I don't remember. He might have been one to know, but they offered me the fight. But then they came back to me and said it has to be at one sixty five. And I said no, I'll only do it one seventy, so that that kind of fell through. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's cool, man. That uh, he passed by your uh, your site, so I, you know, they were thinking about this matchup before. So um, now I don't know if this kid maybe heard your name uh, back then, but he knows your name now. Um, dude, he's very athletic. As uh, Travis and I were speaking before you came on, you know, he's in and out. He's a striker. Um. You know, throws flashy, uh, you know, kicks and stuff like that, man. Is this, uh, is this something that uh, entices you more that you know you can just, uh, I don't know. What, what, what is your thought going here? Do you like someone that's that active on their feet? Uh, do, like, what's your thought process here on on this opponent? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's tough because he didn't really have much film. Is I only could find three fights and. They were all first round finishes, um, so it was really hard to gauge. Really, I mean, he, he looks like he's got some, you know, some solid striking, um, maybe some solid grappling. Um, but I didn't, you know, it was just hard because there's three finishes against, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think the guys he fought was really, you know, super high caliber. Um, so it, it was just hard to kind of get, his, you know, really know, but. Yeah, just from what we watched, we felt confident about it. Um, you know, I don't think he's fought anyone even close to as good as I am. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be a good a good matchup. Um, we're not saying he's he's going to be good. Um, so we're we're expecting it to be a tough fight, but you know, we liked we liked the matchup. Excellent. Well, Travis had a huge scouting report on him, but as we know, you know, Scott, uh, you know, him and uh, Lars are really doing their work and helping you out uh, with this as far as yeah. the matchup. But, you know, Travis made me feel like, you know, the way you talk about him, I'm like, 
man, I can't wait. <laughs> like, like it's it's not no big deal. But Travis was like, not that the kid's a beast, but you know, ha, you know, he's talking about his style and that he's a really. But I like your demeanor and uh, the way you're speaking about this kid. I, and uh, you know, you're my guy. I had, you know, I. I you gotta yeah. kill this dude. I'm gonna be cage side watching it, man. So you know, yeah, I'm um, gonna I'm gonna have your goddamn shirt on. I'm I'm not I'm not middle of the road media for this fight. I mean, I gotta <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> it is what it yeah. is. But but like, listen to you speak about it uh, makes me feel better. I mean, I'm a nervous wreck. I watch fucking uh, you know kids uh, rolling on the yeah. ground. I'm nervous, but um, I mean, he's gonna be he's gonna be tough. But um, I mean, I just I'm, I just you know I'm confident in myself, obviously, and. You know, I think that if I do what I know I can do, I think I'll be very successful. Excellent. Well, um, this is going to be the first time we're meeting you, John. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, person. Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 we'll speak about who uh, is going to make the trip and who might be in the uh, in the crowd because it isn't too far from, uh, from home from you, uh, this trek, man. So... Who's going to be going with you? Who's going to be in your corner? And how many people you got supporting you uh, heading to this fight? So I got um, my mom, my mom, uh, my whole, a lot of the, my, my mom's side of the family is going. Um, they actually live in Pennsylvania and a couple of them live, live near Philly. So, I mean, that worked out pretty good. Um so yeah, my mom's side, there's a couple tables, and then a couple, one of my buddies, his girlfriend, and then another buddy and his girlfriend are going, so a couple of tables. Um, my dad, my dad, that side, uh, couldn't make this one, because for a family reason, so he couldn't make it down, but um, I mean, they'll be watching from home, so uh, yeah, I'll have some people there. Excellent. Well, and it will it will be on uh, UFC Fight Pass, so everyone will get to see are you anxious to uh talk to um to cm punk again is it <laughs> uh, i guess yeah are you gonna call him out <laughs> no probably not I think <laughs> at this point it would be a way way lopsided fight let me tell you <laughs> yeah I, yeah i don't know but yeah, yeah i'm excited to talk to him because i mean that that means i won so oh, awesome that's what i mean so john i'll just have you on a couple more minutes um as far as training get ready for this it's your second pro fight you got to experience, not that you were, you know, dropping too many uh, elbows and stuff like that because you didn't really need to because you you, you you took them out pretty quick in the first round. But what's the process now? Um, what's, what's the difference in, in this approach to the second fight that's different from that first approach to, the, to your debut? Uh, I'm not much. Pretty much same approach. Um, I mean, really, they're kind of similar the, it's kind of a similar fighters. Um, very, you know, good striking, very straightforward, aggressive, um, pretty good uh, jujitsu off their back. Um, yeah, so they're, they're pretty similar. So the approach is pretty much the same. I, you know, I don't really, like I game plan and I watch film, but I more so focus on what I'm going to do more so than making a huge game plan and adjust what I'm going to do to them more so. I'm going to go and do what I do and, I feel like that's gonna be that's gonna be good enough. Excellent. Well, I know uh, you've been rolling around a little bit on uh, the tournament circuits and stuff like that, man. Uh, how important has that been to kind of keep you, uh, you know, fresh and in that competitive uh, kind of spirit? You know, uh, you know, leading you into this uh, this fight coming up next week. Yeah, it was it was fun, you know, because I was trying to fight, couldn't get one, so. Um, I was getting, I was jumping on these uh, grappling cards, you know, going out to get, compete against really high level guys. Um, uh, you know, won a lot of matches, lost a couple matches, so it, it's fun, good experience, compete against some really good guys. Um, yeah, it was fun. Um, I was actually supposed to do, I was supposed to have a match in Philly um, on like a pretty big card coming up the weekend after my fight. Um, but I don't know if you saw I put out that thing for it. Uh, it's seen what the 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 poster for it and stuff like that. Yeah, I was supposed to be on a card. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I I I've been checking out, and there's a couple of uh, other um other dudes on that card that I met that were at uh, another jujitsu tournament not too long ago that I was that I was at. So um, and that was gonna be um, my that was gonna be my segue out of that out of that. But go uh, go ahead about that. 
Oh, yeah, I was going to be on that because uh, I, I couldn't find a fight. So, yeah, the guy the guy who's running it knows our gym pretty well. So he reached out and asked me if I wanted to be on it. And I said, yeah. So he got me matched up. But um, And then it was like a, like an hour after I announced it, that's when I got the call for the fight. So then I got a hold of the promoter. I was like, hey, I'm taking a fight, this and that. Um, I still want to do the, the card April 10th. Like, I still have plan to and everything. Um, and he said, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I understand. Take the fight, but I'm going to have to take you off the card. I can't risk you getting hurt. And apparently this guy lives down there. He's going to sell a lot of tickets. This yeah, and that. So yeah, he, cool. Uh, yeah. He, um, under, he, he understood, but he had to take me off. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Uh, I mean, he's going to build up the, 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 the card too. Uh, but, you know, John, we had uh, a really, we have some successful stuff going down here. Tournaments, money tournaments and stuff like that. So I've been talking to yeah. Lars and uh, Travis and, uh, you know, you're busy. You're fighting in MMA. You're getting that career going. But there is combat. Yeah. There is some combat jujitsu going on down here or yeah. up here, along with a lot of uh, super fights and uh, some uh, some money on the line. So, you know, if there's a if there's a hiatus between this fight and the next man, uh, let's let's get you rolling in New England so we can support you and uh, get uh, get your name flowing around here on them mats. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely um come down to that. Excellent, for sure. Wasn't, right. uh, wasn't one of those ones that this a weekend ago, or was the other, the other guy busted? Yeah, he, he, he had him. Yeah, he had him in that. Yeah, uh, I, I, that, I, that, that was... I was right, dude. That fucking thing has gone viral because I was right there, and I I, I interviewed yeah. uh, Calvin Tacy. He uh, trains out of um, out of uh, I'm the guy's gonna fucking kill me. Um, he's a top Tom DeBlas guy, right? Yes, Tom DeBlas. Yes, yes, he is. He's like a really good close student of Tom. Tom's really awesome, but he's he he. I think he's fighting. He might be in that uh, tournament you're talking about because oh, he, he is. Might be. There's a lot. There's a, there's a, like pretty much all you yeah. know, the, high, the highest level competitors. So, so all right, all right, J- John, off MMA for a second. Then I'll let you give your shout outs and we'll throw your shirt, uh, your shirt picture up there. But you, you've been in these tournaments. There's been money on the line, uh, not to go one way or the other, but you know, in that that Estemalak, he snapped. Um, uh, he snapped his leg, Santos' leg, pretty quick, and he explained it. And in tournaments, and there was a there was a series of stuff that happened in that role that Calvin had him in a couple of submits or close submissions that, you know, ninety nine percent people would have tapped, and Calvin was like, "Oh fuck, he didn't tap, so I might have to go." What is uh, the mentality in a tournament like that, as far as you and the boundaries, as far as uh. It, you know, what's on the line and, and how far do you go? Like, what did you see in that? Can you give an opinion on that? Or we're going to just, uh, we, we letting you go from yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If I'm competing for money, I'm going to snap that thing in half. All right. <laughs> I don't what, care. That's, that's on you to tap. I don't care. So, all right. Would you think of a, would you think of the, the move as itself and it going viral and stuff? Is it something that you have tried or you've done? And is it something I, that I know, you, I've never, uh, I, I know I know of the move. I've you know trained and drilled it, but it's not really something I've done in in a competition. But it, you know, like like you saw in the competition, it's it's hard to do that in training because it's one of those things. that's kind of a yeah, yeah, all or nothing thing. So yeah, I don't really do it in training type thing, and um, never done the competition. But yeah, I knew what the move was. It was pretty pretty nasty. That was pretty that was pretty good. So when <laughs> that's what I wrote in there. So when you saw, it, you went, oh fuck. Yeah, that, that yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I, I mean, I feel bad for the guy. Like, yeah. obviously, hopefully, it wasn't seriously hurt. But you know, if you're competing in the tournament, especially for money, like, you know, you got, you know, you're taking that risk. Excellent, my man. Well, last thing, uh, last two things, and you, I'll let you give your shout outs and sponsors. Not, I don't know if you can remember them all because they're piling on <laughs> by the by the hour with you, John. But we do have a, a shirt link to buy shirts. I did purchase mine yesterday, yeah, yeah. and we're gonna be wearing it because you. You, as we talking to you in the beginning, Lars, Travis, and myself will be making the trip along with another fellow fighter who is looking to make his pro debut, who is managed by Full Contact. So we're going to bring him there, right. and we're going to have a good time with you, John, and another one of yeah, our fighters. Right. Another one of our fighters is fighting on the card for the first time in his career. So um, let me throw that link up as far as your shirt. And uh, Jonathan, give shout outs and any sponsors you can think of on the top of your hat you want to, uh, you know, give mention to. 
Yeah. Are you throwing that shirt up? So yeah, it's up right now. The shirt, the, the, the shirt link <laughs> oh, is up now. I guess. Uh, I'll go. Um, yeah, so I got a bunch of spots for this one. So first one is uh, Belfield Realty. Uh, they're from back home where I'm from. They were the first ones, actually. Um, shout out to them. Um, young Chiropractic, he, uh, he's he been giving me adjustments for a couple months now, keeping me fresh, so that's awesome. Um, I got Laura Real Estate out here in Rochester, a guy I trained with, actually. He runs the, the business, so um, he's a real cool guy. Um, shout out to him. Um, I got Great Outdoor Builders, which is actually the company run by my dad and brother. Um, so they kind of had to sponsor me. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, uh, obviously they do a lot for me. Um, Stagliato Builders, uh, another guy I trained with out here. Um, really nice guy. You know, he reached out. He wanted to help me out. Um, let's see, another one I just jumped on the other day is uh, oh Armor Security. Um, a guy I know out here. Um, I know him a little bit, but he reached out. He wanted to also jump on, so he talked to Lars and uh, Travis. They got that set up, so he's on there officially. Um, let's see. Oh, Furness Heating and Cooling. Um, one of my good friends growing up throughout, throughout high school. Um, still one of my good friends reached out, so he wanted to help out. So, yeah, shout out to him. And um, last one, I believe, was uh, Skyline Taxidermy, which was uh, my – Grandpa's business. He does a tax service business, so he, they wanted to help me out too. Um, did you? Would you say? I think a, I, a, did you say a taxidermy business? Ta- taxidermy, like they stuff the animals. Oh my God! Where does he do this? My daughter will be right. Like wants to see the whole process. What? Can we bring something dead? <laughs> well, I can show you. Uh, I'll show you. I don't, I'll oh. see if I can screen something. You got trophies. I love it. Wait a minute. What do you got over there? Dead Ooh. iguana or something? <laughs> That's uh, I, my he did that for me. I shot that deer. A while no back. shit. Awesome. Yeah. So so, where? All right. Well, you're in fucking. You're in like where? You're in New Jersey or something. Uh, I I can't fucking. Oh no, I'm in. Ro- I'm. Well, I'm not right you're now. You're in New York. In Rochester. Yeah. That's where I live. But well, I grew up near Utica, New York. Not in Utica, but in a small little tiny town. So. Awesome, so my God. My is there, is there all right? So. He's one of your, is there, does he have an Instagram page? Does he have a business page? Something I could check out and, and let my, if, if not, sure. listen, John, throw it on his feed because, uh, Travis and, yeah. uh, Travis and Lars are throwing up links and, and, uh, you know, sponsors of yours. So if you think of a, if you don't, I'll bother you on messenger, but I, it's for yeah. my daughter. She, she loves that. That's kind of shit to, you know, see guts come up. Yeah. Not that, not, you know what I mean? Not just to see the process. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, uh, John. Last thing, man. You have these shirts coming out, um, or come or ready to come out. I ordered mine yesterday. We're all gonna be wearing them. We're gonna be cage side. We uh, talked to Helen and we tried to bribe her a little bit. So um, they they're gonna have us as close to cage as possible. Not to you know not there we go. not to get you nervous or anything. You know what I mean. But, <laughs> no, but uh, no. dude, let's talk about the shirts real quick and 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 you know how. I know how to get them. I got them up here, but you know, how is important is it to, to people support you and, and wear these things and give you support uh, for the second fight? Yeah, it's uh, huge. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've just been, uh, you know, blown away with how much support I've gotten. Um, how many people reached out just for sponsoring. Um, you know, it's awesome. I'm, I, you know, making a lot more money on this fight from my sponsors than my fight purse. So that's <laughs> awesome. I really, Helps me out a lot. I can really focus on training. I don't really got to worry about the money and stuff. Um, you know, and I'm hoping I can, you know, keep this up, go in the right direction. I can get to the point where I can train full time. Um, so, yeah, that's been that's been amazing. Um, I got so much support back home out here in Rochester. So, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing how much uh, support and um, I got and how many people reached out to help me. So, yeah. Awesome, my man. Well, next week uh, I'm doing my last podcast before – we hit the road Thursday morning to come see you and Nick fight on Thursday night. But we're going to give a couple of your shirts away next uh, next Wednesday on our live podcast. Uh, we don't expect you to tune in because you'll be cutting weight. Oh uh, No, you will well, already be, be, no, be, you'll be done. You'll be all happy and shit. You better fucking tune in. So anyway, and hopefully my shirt comes in. I'll wear well. I'll wear it two days in a row. I'll wear Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> all right, John, man. Appreciate you coming on, giving me some time, man. Congratulations on um 
on, you know, getting there and having your second fight for CFFC and, and, you know, really good things for you, man. You seem like, uh, you know, you, you level headed and, uh, you know, you got your shit going, man. And a lot of support. Love to see it. And I'm going to be so happy to meet your brother and watch you fight, uh, yeah. you know, Cade side, man. So last thing, Jonathan, uh, Jonathan, I'm going to stop that. Laz yells at me every time I call you Jonathan, but <laughs> John, uh, sh- shout out to, um, your social media and then I'll let you get the hell out of here and, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah, it's just uh, Instagram, is just at Jonathan underscore Pierzma. Pretty simple. Excellent. We got to build that up, man, because uh, you know you're you know the spot the sponsors are here, and here's what's great about these they'll they'll stick with you every fight. So you got these yeah. got these sponsors. Well, that's the biggest thing. I was never a, I was never a social media guy at all. Like I didn't do any of it, and I didn't make an Instagram till October, like yeah. six months ago, just because I had to. You kind of have to. Yeah, exactly. Stuff nowadays, so. Well, here's so, yeah, I was never big on that, so I'm trying to make myself do it a little bit yeah. here. But Well, down the line, we'll make you a business page, uh, you know, John. But last thing, John, uh, last thing. This has, like, been the 10th fucking last thing when you start. <laughs> Dude, uh, yeah. Lars did a lot of work on your on your fight logo, on your shirt. Yeah. We talked about in the beginning he was we had ideas and stuff, but he worked really hard on that, man. The shirt came out fabulous, I really think, man. Yeah, it looks awesome. So... Do you have a nickname? What is your what is your do you have a fight name yet? Is it is it no, is it there yet? I, what's wrong I with J I, what's wrong with JP? I mean fucking the, the, that's a you know. Uh, that's I mean, a, yeah, I guess. Well, it's kind of one of those things. I can't I can't give myself a nickname, so I kinda gotta wait all right. Well, you, all right, here's what here's the thing it has to happen, John. Your coach has to yell it out like when you're making your fucking yeah. you know, walk to the cage. Like he's just gonna tell huh? the announcer right then the name. <laughs> and then they'll let yeah. you, you know what I mean? I have to tell him to go on that. That's it. I'm going to get all over him. If I meet him before you fight, we're going to whisper some names in his ears. So he's going <laughs> to... I know. I, I, would like a, I would like a cool one. I just, you know, I can't give it to myself. I, so. I know. It's time, brother. This is going to be a second fucking uh, win right here. We got to get a name for you. Yeah, all right, my man. Yeah. Thank you so much for uh, for giving me the time, brother. And I'll see you in a, in a week's time from now, man. Yeah. Can't wait. All right, can't brother. Wait. You have a good night, man, and uh, you know, have a uh, safe week. And I'll see you uh, next Thursday night, brother, for that second pro fight of yours, my man. Sounds good. We'll see you then. Later, buddy. See ya. That's our show. That was fucking awesome, man. He's a good, good fucking kid. Good kid. Uh, did I mention that I need a producer? I need a producer that sits here, presses buttons, and goes. As you could see, <clears throat> with this, I didn't go back and forth with the um, the split screen and the full screen because it's too <laughs> excuse me, it's too much to press buttons and concentrate on what the fighters are saying. So <clears throat> I need a producer in here. I'll teach her everything. All you have to do is press buttons back and forth. So with that said, um, last thing I want to say here is. Help these kids out. Buy shirts. Share their posts. Share their stuff. Uh, just share it, man. It's New England. It's uh, you know, it's the fighting community. John is not from New England. He's from New York. But, dude, he'll be fighting in New England. We'll get him a match up here when things open up. Uh, but that's kind of my story. So with that said, next Wednesday, next Wednesday, I don't have a picture or a poster of, of it yet. But next Wednesday night, uh, the night before we leave for CFFC, uh, we'll recap <coughs> a little road trip. We'll talk about our fourth fourth um, road trip guy with us that we're inviting. And we'll also have on Trevor Goody, who will be fighting at Bellator um, in April. He is a big to-do. He's coming off a huge win. At Bellator, their last card or two here, taking out one of the Gracie dudes. Huge, huge, huge fight for Trevor going against uh, George Masvidal, um, prodigy or you know really high, high. Um, I don't know one of his guys. So that's all I got to say. So Trevor Goody will be calling in next Wednesday night from Mohegan Sun hotel room in quarantine before his fight. So with that said, 
Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so much, John Piersma. Thank you, Travis Lazat, full, full contact writer, for calling in and bailing me out tonight with a great segment on everything going on with our UFC and MMA New England fighters. Uh, thank you so much. And with that said, Domenico, Ambassador of the Fighters, we out of here. 